Well, hello. It's Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and that can only mean one thing, and that is that it's time for painting with Dyson Dungeons. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit late for getting started. Actually, I did start right at 10 o'clock, but apparently we had a little technical difficulty and the stream didn't get going. Um, hopefully it is working this time. If it's not working, um, you won't know that because it's not working, but we got somebody monitoring and they'll let me know uh, if it's going or not. So yes, it is time for painting with Dyson Dungeons. Dyson Dungeons is a Twitch streaming operation. Our main show is a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which streams at two o'clock on Sunday. Uh, we are kind of taking a little break now and then during the summer, so keep an eye on social media to see when we're broadcasting that. Broadcasting, that shows my age, right? Uh, streaming that because our campaign is pretty exciting right now and dangerous, and um, I'm not really sure what the DM is going to do to us. Definitely not for us. So, that happens. What this is, though, is that this is a painting show and we paint a couple of different things here. In the past we have done, and I'm hoping we get back to these because I really kind of liked these. These were much more relaxing than the many things, in my opinion anyway. Uh, dungeon tiles. And we have these really cool dungeon tiles. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, there's somebody in chat, so it looks like we are actually broadcasting. And I will do a flip as soon as I'm done introducing ourselves. So. Yeah, dungeon tiles, which we started doing just so that we had dungeons for our stream. And these are really pretty cool. They're on the 3D printers back there. They're printed right here, primed right here, and painted here. And they're really neat things like this stone dungeon with a metal door that you can put in here. And when that's hinged, it works. It's pretty neat. And uh, this is a wooden one that we've used for warehouses and taverns. And you can see that that comes out really cool too, which also has doors that operate. Not all of the tiles have doors, of course, just the door tiles have doors. The window tiles have windows and the wall tiles are just walls, but you know, that's how that is. Uh, they're pretty neat too, because uh, yeah, because we throw things on the floor. They've got these little ball magnets in them. And the, really, and the ball magnets let us assemble dungeons that don't fall apart on the table, but easily come apart for storage and reconfiguration. So keep an eye on dice and dungeons, because someday, maybe, the rumor is, it's just a rumor at this point, maybe someday you too might be able to get these really cool um, dungeon tiles. In fact, not just tiles and components, but in fact, total actual dungeons. And if you're watching over underneath me, you can see kind of like scrolling uh, the kinds of things that we painted in the past, including complete dungeon sets, which are made up of a uh, multiple number of those sorts of things. Um, well, that door that I dropped. Looks like it's gone forever. I'll have to try to find that in a little while. Uh, what we have been doing over the last week or so is painting a little lizard lead. There are eight lizard characters here. Uh, they're forming a little bit of an army that I am hoping, that I am actually hoping will become uh, companions of ours at some point. You know, that we get to travel along with them. And Alexis, our DM, can do eight different little lizard voices as we ask all of them to share their tragic backstory and what do they think happened to Fervin. So that's going to be fun. Uh, if she doesn't do that, then we're probably just going to have to do battle with them, which would be unfortunate because they're all really pretty cute. And I don't know, probably ineffective. We'll see. So, so far we've got five of the eight painted. Lizards come in all sorts of different colors, so each one has a different body color. These are two that Nikki did last week. This is the first one I did a couple of weeks ago. 
Yeah, and this is the one I actually did on Monday. Okay. And there's three more to go. There's, uh, and, and I've been avoiding them because, you know, this one's not too bad, but this one's really awful to paint, to be honest, because it's got like these tiny little gaps between the arrow shaft and the body that you have to get a paintbrush into and not get paint on everything else. So you might have a chance to see Nikki do that. Um, at any rate, uh, we'll, we'll be finishing this probably just in time for something that will happen with them on our show. But, um, yep, I will do a flip. I'm going to put these guys aside for today because I'm not going to be painting a little lizard guy today. I'm going to be doing a flip with the door. Sorry, I re what's bothering me that I lost that door, so I'm going to go look for it. Yay. <laughs> it wasn't lost forever, it just lost for a little while. So this this door, which is almost indistinguishable front and back. You can only tell the difference between this one has a little bit of like a flaw in the print initially, maybe a little damage that happened at some point versus this side. So this guy's gonna get flipped. There. And yeah, there again. So there's a there's a flip for at least this part of the show. So um, rather than doing a little lizard, I'm going to be doing a boar, a wild boar. I don't know if Zoria can change into one of these yet. She can only change into things that she's seen. And I know like elk is one of those, and jaguar is one of those, and wolf is one of those. Um, bear. I don't know if she's seen a wild boar, but at some point probably because we're going to have a boar to work with. Um, I started this with the fierce mouth and the teeth. Made a little mess of it, but I wanted to get the inside of the mouth and the teeth painted in. I started this on Monday, and uh, as promised, I looked it up online to see and what colors would be most natural for a wild boar. And it turns out that they are aptly named. They are really boring. Uh, basically, they're monochromatic. Okay? I mean, they're brown with such tiny variations you know, from top to bottom and front to back that might as well just spray paint them brown and leave it at that. So, um, that might make it easy to paint, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to shade it from bottom to top with the bottom being slight lighter and the top being much darker and that the this raised hackle fur on the top is going to be the, you know like black tips and things and I'm going to use an umber wash on it to try to bring the colors together and maybe even a black or dark gray wash on the tops of these points. This is a little difficult to hold on to, so there's two ways I can do this. One is I can bury, like I've done here, the back feet in the putty stuff that holds on to things, and there's an advantage to that because this is really easy to hold. There's a disadvantage because feet are buried. The other thing I could try to do, that I've got these alligator cliffs, is uh, I could like just clip onto one of the feet like that. Hold on to it. That's, I don't know, that's fairly secure. It's not as easy to hold on to though. Yeah, you know, especially when I'm painting large surfaces. So I'm going to um, go ahead and just bury the back feet in the goo and start painting it and Finish. We'll worry about that when we get to the end. Try to smooth this out again, because every time I put in it, it just gets deeper and deeper into it. So, yeah, we'll see. I had done this a little bit earlier today. Put it in there, and I thought it was nice and secure. 
And then I came down and looked at it and it had fallen. So, yeah. Take off my glasses. I have to do that to see close up. No, I can't see far away. But, um, yeah. So what I've got here is um, this really exciting collection of three brown colors. Yeah, light, medium, and dark brown. So I'm going to go from the bottom to the top, trying to uh, make the demarcation lines a little fuzzy, you know, because they're not... That's how it could be, and then I've got dark gray and black that I'm going to use for the tips of the hackles on the back. So, yeah, we're going to see uh, brown. Um, what I'm going to do first, since this, as you can see, that's, I mean, that's really spiky up there. And it's going to be really hard to get paint into all the nooks and crannies and all of that. And it's going to be really important to do that because if it isn't painted inside of those things, then it's going to show the primer, which would really not be very helpful. So I'm going to um, start with the darkest of the three browns and paint all of that. And it isn't necessarily that that's the color. A lot of that's going to be like dark gray and black, you know. But I want a base coat under there that will kind of flow from the rest of the body color into that because uh, the, the dark gray and the black will just will be kind of highlighting it. But this whole thing will end up being darker than this color. And in fact, what I'm probably going to do is uh, paint down. I don't want it to look like a stripe. And that's going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to paint down onto the shoulder and the haunch in the back with the darker brown color, and then use the lighter brown and just kind of fold it in, and then the lightest of the browns and do the same, and try to keep keep the colors just kind of flowing into each other. And I'm hoping when I wash it later that that will, that that will help the effect. But I want it to shade from lighter to darker to black. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. This is a this is going to be a nice relaxing model, except you know for the shading part, except for the very face. You know, we're going to paint the ears a little bit black there. You have to be real careful around the lips so I don't lose the teeth and the and the mouth. And it's got these little tusks. These little tusks are going to be painted kind of a beige color with a brown wash. There, there will be a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of detail painting there. And then it's got these nasty eyes here. And I think I'm going to paint those red. Like the inside here, just a little bit. When I get to the front, I'm going to paint them red inside and put a, like a white pupil in or yellow. Something menacing. They're not really well defined. So you're gonna have to kind of make up where they belong. But I think kind of bright, bright red. Not like the mouse color, but bright red, glowing eyes with a, you know, a lighter colored pupil. You know, that might look pretty decent. So I'm gonna get. I hardly ever use this brush. It's a, you know, really soft, long bristled brush that uh, it's a little too small to do made large work on dungeon tiles. And a little too big to do anything else, but I'm thinking that it would work well pushing the paint up into the hackles. So I really, it's really important to get that all painted. And it, you know, it, it might help too in terms of getting the fuzzy demarcation line between the color and the other. So we'll just see how this goes. Shake up this brown. We can paint on this. 
One thing that does make relaxing painting kind of relaxing is that if things get messed up, you can always just uh, basically pull out the primer and repaint it. I was looking at this figure that Nikki had done earlier too. This is a fancy guy. She did an amazing job on this. Look at all the look at the detail on the sash. Really nice job of shading. Got the trim around the cape. Yeah. Wine glass is full. That's a really nice touch. Yeah. It's a really cool figure. Probably will show up as some sort of uh, adversary in the stream. Grab an, an arrogant and who knows what their battle characteristics are. Maybe a magic user. Maybe nothing more than somebody who calls on their lizard army you know, to fight us. So I don't know. Inside the cape there, just wow. Just notice that. She did a great job on that. Okay. So, brown paint. We're going to stick brown paint way deep inside of all of these hackles. And after doing that, we're going to let it dry a little bit and then come back and see all the spots that didn't get painted. We do them because painting into something that has just a whole lot of texture like this, it's not, it's pretty common to either look, you know, like the paint is way above the surface and as it dries, it, it contracts and pulls apart. And then you get little white bubbles all over the place. Like I said, I'm gonna paint down into the body where I think the dark color will more or less end up. And I'll be painting up into it with the lighter colors later. Start up here, because this is... takes a fair amount of paint and I might, you know, I'm going to end up playing around with the, the hackles on the top here quite a bit. Actually, as I... Doing is uh, highlighting it with a dark, dark gray and black and make it look really menacing. Got its ears up here. I'm gonna lose those or do something to highlight those a little later. These little beady eyes are way, way down there. Got these nice long bristles that are soft and just kind of push down into that. It's a lot of surface area though. It doesn't look very big, but because it's all spiky like that, it's probably like four times the surface area total, maybe more uh, than it looks like on the model. I haven't used this much of one color on a figure, I think, since at all, other than a really big one. I 
painting down into the body. I'm not sure where where the color will end up and the next one will begin, but I want to get it down far enough so that um, we don't have to paint down into it later. I'm thinking kind of like that. In above the eyes. Change the color later when I bring the lighter paint out, but front and try to, you know, get a little sense of symmetry going at least. Like I said, doing a number on the brush, but Vivian LaFleur, thanks for joining. using one color. This is the first time in, since we've been painting figures instead of dungeon tiles that have actually used up the paint in the bottle cap. You know, it's kind of a thing to do because, you know, why waste paint? There's lots of paint in the bottle cap after you shake it up. And when we're painting dungeon tiles, we always use that first and it goes really fast. When we're painting mini figures, when you're using like tiny little drops of paint, usually that stuff dries up and gets too viscous to use really quickly and then uh, just sits there. But this time we managed to use it up, which is kind of nice. Paints are interesting. They they change color pretty drastically as they dry. As you can see, you know, it goes on kind of chocolatey color, but then it turns uh, darker, like here. Uh, camera here, you can see a spot that's kind of dried, and you can see the little change in the color. So what I'm going to do now is pretty much just rotate this in all sorts of different directions. Make sure that I have gotten brown paint on all of the visible surfaces. at it from all sorts of different angles. You can see places where it didn't get painted. Most of which are not too obvious because if they were obvious, they'd be painted, right? But I'm gonna paint the whole tail this dark brown color because I'm not sure I'm probably going to end up highlighting it with a really dark color. Mm -hmm. I like the spines up here, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to paint it this color for now. And it can change colors later. Kind of hit, this brush is not bad for the... patient light. I have another one kind of like this, and what I might end up doing is order between one color and the next, and just kind of like dab it.
this is the color that's going to be on the bottom, but you can see that if you do that, you can get more of a natural look as opposed to um, a stripe. So it looks like I've got that uh, pretty well covered at this point. That's going to have to dry for a good long time. There's a lot of paint in some of these nooks and crannies. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the dark gray and just start painting the tops of these things. Do that. And say, well, what am I going to do next? One thing I could do is I could paint the tusks, but I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to do that kind of as a last thing. Now, touchy. Decide what color the snout will be. When I looked at the wild boar online, I thought, okay, well, maybe this would be like a pink color or black or something and would be distinguished from the rest of the body. And, you know, everything was just the same shade of brown. Um, okay. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, what I'm going to do next is paint the lightest of the brown colors. Why do that? Because this is still drying and I can't really paint up to it and get any kind of consistency. Some places where it's wet, the colors will blend together. Some places where it's dry, they won't. I'm going to have to come back and touch things up. I can already see there's a couple of places, little spots, whereas the paint is drying, it's pulling apart a little bit or oh my like under there can you see that there's some spots that didn't even get painted at all I should probably wait for it just to dry and then just come back and do the whole thing again you know the tiny little dots like this right now but I saw them and thought well Me, um, hello, thanks for joining in. Hi, Tomlin. Appreciate that. Yeah, because I'd probably forget about it. Anyway, that was that, three dots. Now I'm going to take the lightest of our three brown colors. And colors and I'm going to start painting the um, very defeat uh, the underside here and I might I'm going to paint up real close to the dark brown and then there's an intermediate color that I'm going to use almost like dry brushing to like blend the two together and it'll be like probably up to here. They'll be just arbitrary places. Um, the whole face is going to take a fair amount of time. It's the only place where there's any detail really on this model it is on the face. So yeah, under the chin and its little eyes. You can see them later. I can find them again. They're really not too terribly well defined. And the snout, and I'll be painting the tusks last. So I'm going to paint the underbody, and while that's happening, this will be drying. And as this is dried, I'm going to come back to it and make it a lot darker. This color was flat brown. This next color is wonderfully named Flat Earth. And I'm just going to keep using this larger brush. It seems to be working pretty well in putting the base coat on and covering a larger area. Here. Mm -hmm. 
knowing that uh, the, these back legs, they're going to require some you know, kit before I wash it, paint the, the back legs and the hooves. But for now, I need to have some way of holding this model. Again, what I'm going to do is, like I brought the dark brown down further than I needed to, I'm going to bring this right on up to it. And I've got an intermediate color. I do not have the skill that Nikki has, so I won't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try anyway. Since I have an intermediate color that I'm going to use to kind of uh, blend, hopefully, the demarcation line between these two colors. And what I'm looking for at the end is kind of a smooth flow without any real stripes or demarcations from the dark brown to the light brown, and then wash it with a brown wash to hopefully um, you know, blend it all together and make it look sort of natural. It's going to look significantly more interesting than a real wild boar, which is, according to the pictures on the internet, just one shade of brown from top to bottom with so little variation you can hardly see it. I'm not going to paint too much on the on the face here. That's we're going to have to have a different brush and a different technique to do that. Paint up to it, but not not on it. I don't want to lose the detail around the mouth. Get this page coat on. And as with the dark color on top, I'm sure what will happen is that this dries, um, and the paint shrinks a little bit, that there'll be spots that I'll have to touch up. Start to see already here, you know, that there's little, that there's spots where the paint didn't get to the darker. And these, these holders are really nice because um, you really need to be able to rotate this thing and look at it from all sorts of angles because inevitably, as we might say, when you look at it from different angles, you just see places that were missed. Here behind the booths inside of that leg there, it's completely missed. Oh my, yeah, it's a little butt, butt got missed. I'm going to have to move for the camera because I keep wandering off the screen. This, this color in and let it dry and then come back and be touching up with it.
symmetry on this is not that critical. Even a live animal wouldn't be absolutely symmetric from side to side. But I, you know, I want them close, so. The, it's not too bad. And then, and then between these two, there's an intermediate brown that I'm going to be putting on to try to um, blend basically the, the two colors together. The very bottom, the very bottom, since this, this isn't going to be displayed this way, it sits like that. Okay. The very bottom. I'm not going to mess too much. I'm going to let the brown wash and give it some life because once this, this paint dries, even though it's a really nice color, it, uh, it is very flat. The wash, especially on this color, really helps bring it to light. And the, you can't really see the brown wash on this darker color. And in kind of the intermediate, it sort of works but I'm not going to be using that to color it so much as to get rid of the flatness of it and help blend the colors together when I get to that. And I'm just leaving the, the face alone right now. That'll be a whole nother, another chore. Now this side, see the, the edging there? That's all nice and ragged. And this side is just not so I'm going to I'm going to raggedy it up a little bit, even though I'm going to be painting over it. You just never know what will show under what. It doesn't take much to make things look ragged. That's your eye. I'm sitting here, I can see the little bright spots show through in a darker color even as we speak here and here and here and here here and here way down inside there it's quite a lot of uh, touching up that I want to do to cover those before I start putting the black, the dark gray highlights on the ankles on the back here. I'm gonna let that go for just a minute or two, yeah. And then um, set it down there so you can kind of see what's going on. And then I will be touching up the dark color. Putting this nice uh, soft floppy brush away for a moment. Not getting out the teeniest little detail brush yet, but this one, it's uh, one that I use fairly often. Uh, but basically, what I want to do next is get out the flat brown again and touch up all those spots that are now appearing that we knew would. You can see, I don't know if you can see that on camera, this stuff goes on kind of reddish. And it, when it dries, it gets really nice and dark. So what I'm doing here is just pushing paint down into little spots that should be dark brown, which have turned into 
tiny little dots of primer color. Especially want to get the ones that are real obvious, like up on the front legs there. Definitely want to get these. I want a dark brown underneath and undercoat. And after I put the black highlighting on, it'll be really hard to do that without having to then come back and try to get kind of a uniform look of the uh, dark gray over times in this light you, know, you see a, a gray spot turns out not to actually be a spot that's not painted it just turns out to be a spot that's wet and shiny behind here there a good spot to have missed same thing on the other side we'll just start looking at this from all different angles Well, it's kind of okay. I really should just paint all the way down onto those surfaces. Um, and on these hooves, look, I just missed the whole part of the leg. That's pretty impressive. Big spot there, just didn't get that painted at all. So I think what I'm gonna do, you know, I'm looking at this and noticing where I missed up is to go back to this flat earth color, and make sure I get all of those areas covered well before I start trying to blend the light brown and the dark brown together with the medium brown. Because for some reason, even after looking at it from every angle, so to speak, I managed to miss like large chunks of the model. Pretty clever me. And I'm gonna paint down way past the edge of the border of the hoofs there because Otherwise, there'll be a little gap between the black of the hook and the model body color. This will give me a chance to find a little white spots that didn't get covered. Brown wash will, you know, hide some of those if there aren't any. 
when you have to depend on that. We'll rotate this again and look at it from the top and the bottom to see whether or not I missed large portions of its base coat color. Nice, nice boring monochromatic bottom that's going to stay pretty much nice boring monochromatic bottom. Okay, well, at least I caught the parts that were totally missed before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the hackles on top, and these are actually going to be very dark, okay, dark and menacing. Um, little spots here and there, maybe even this little bit of the tip of the tail here. And I'm going to use maybe this brush, mostly just almost like dry brushing, a, a dark gray color onto it. Because I want the, this to be distinct, you know, I want this to blur with an intermediate color. And I hope that works, we'll see. But I want the, this to actually be pretty distinct in terms of its color and be much darker. I'm going to just put a little paint on my brush and then start painting the tops. I don't need to get down into it. I think it'll look deeper, like more depth of brown underneath and blackish on top. And I'm going to use a dark gray color rather than just black see how that looks it's always uh, easy enough to make it darker again you know as i keep failing to get it on camera see, nikki was actually trained in art history and as an artist and so she knows what she's doing when, she, when she's doing this kind of stuff. I, I don't, I'm just making this up. I used to paint um, military models, you know, and that, uh, that's just not the same. So this is going on quite light and it gets darker as it dries. See if it gets dark enough. If not, I've got kind of a nice grayish black color. be that might work better I'm gonna start with this and then uh, I can make it darker pretty easily with another color and again I want these to not be the same color as the body color be Um, it's looking not really what I had in mind here, but again, this paint, this particular color does get darker as it dries and we'll see if it gets dark enough to do the job as intended. thinking it wouldn't anyway. That's why I pulled out the black color. 
I figured I'd probably put that over this as well and maybe give it like, you know, multicolor layers almost of color on, on the, um, really a mane but the handles on the back. You can see as it's drying, it actually is getting darker, which is a good thing. But I still think I'm going to pull out, after this is done, the black paint and uh, tip it. I'm going to put black tips on it. Paint and maybe even more just on the tippy surfaces. Yeah, it's really, if it's drying, it's really not too bad. But I think, yeah, I'm going to pull out the black paint and I'm just going to touch, touch the tips of all of these. Get yeah, yeah, even more of the depth. As you can see, I'm just brushing the surface, not pushing it way down into it. actually kind of working the way I wanted it to. It actually looks better on camera than it does here. Okay. But, which is probably okay. Sorry, it's hard to hear. Kind of decent, actually. Paint the tips of the ears. And I'm going to paint the very tippy tips of the ears here. A little white spot. Mm -hmm. The reflection. Yeah, it's just a bump, so it's a reflection. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. Actually, not too terribly long. I don't mind if the colors bleed into each other a little bit. I'm going to um, since it doesn't look too bad yet, but I want yet even more depth to it. I'm going to get the. the gray black out. You can see what's going on. Get the gray black out and just touch the tips. Looks like it's not going to end up using the entire four hours today. Because it's just really not a very complicated model. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to start next. Maybe I'll start, we start but not finish one of these lizard guys. I'll go look at them later to see which ones, which one I'm willing to tackle. I'm definitely not doing the bow guy though. That's, that's just going to not work for me. Okay, so what I want to do is this is a much darker color. So I just want to touch, just touch the tips. Yeah, 
So the, the hair is... There isn't very much of this going on, but I think, I think it's having, I think it's going to be okay. At this, and I'm thinking, you know, that those have turned out to be actually pretty nice. I might end up not even washing that later. I'm not sure that any that the wash would really show, and I'm not sure it would add to it. But yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's kind of what I was going for. I was just hoping it would be, you know, dark and contrasted with the rest of the body color. I'm just adding that little bit of black into the tips of these on top of the gray and the brown. Just, I think that's uh, that's looking okay. So I'm going to stop messing with that at the moment. This next bit. This next bit, I have no idea what I'm doing here. So uh, what I'm hoping to do is we have a lighter brown down here and a darker brown up here. And so we have an intermediate brown. It's a little bit redder, but it kind of goes between the two. So I want to <coughs> use it to blend these colors together. And what I'm going to try to do is I think I'm going to use this a soft brush again. Just mess up the tip of it. Why not? It's not, you know, nothing, no fancy. <laughs> Maybe I'll use the other soft brush. I've got two of these. I don't know. See, look, there's a choice. One's made in Korea and the other made in China. Hmm. I could make this a geopolitical choice. Don't you think? I'm going to use the uh, China. That's the one I used before, maybe inadvertently because I hadn't checked or I don't want to use it in Korea. Well, give the, like, this one a, ch a chance. Give this one. I don't know. Looking at the bristles, this holds together pretty well. This one breaks up and it's fuzzier. I'm, I'm going to go with the fuzzy one here. This is a very, very old brush. 
these aren't that bad. Look, it's even, it's even warped. Some of these brushes, been using them forever. We used to paint um, Warhammer when, it, when Warhammer, the, the original series, not, not the mechanical one or anything. The original one came out with Citadel. They had these big box sets, and one came with uh, lizard men, orcs and goblins, and elves, high elves. And my two kids and I bought one of those, and I painted the the. Uh, Orcs and goblins, and Nikki painted the lizard people, the lizard men, which were not nearly as detailed as these guys. And our son Alex painted the high elves and painted them beautifully. They were really, really shiny and kind of ostentatious and, I don't know, probably arrogant. I want this to come down a little further. Just, just as I'm looking at it, I can just see things. I'm just seeing if this come down. Anyway, um, that was, uh, I'm going to say a little over 20 years ago. And so these brushes that I am using that probably need to be retired, but you know, you get old and you say, no, it's not broken, they're still working, they hold paint, they move things around. And these brushes date back to those Citadel Warhammer figures. That's why they look a little bit beat up and why they're not as good as the really cool expensive ones. Mickey, Mickey bought these. You know, really nice handles that are easy to hold. Bristles that hold up and kind of splay out all over the place. Yeah, and I, and I bought some too. I bought some. When we first started doing these minifigs a while ago, I bought some more expensive brushes. New ones figuring, well, you know, maybe it's time to retire some of these. And, I just haven't used them yet. Okay, so I'm really quite happy with how the hackles on the main turned out with the brown undercoat and then the gray and the black on top of it. There's a lot of depth in that, I think. And it's this it's how I wanted it to contrast with the body color. So this bit, trying to blend these two t colors together by kind of dabbing an intermediate color on them is either going to work or not so we'll try it and if it doesn't work well the sides of the body are relatively easy to paint you know, there's not not much demand on that so uh we'll just start here and see and if that seems to work then we'll do that on both sides and then let that be and then begin to work on the face, which is a whole lot more detail. You have to get out the bitty brush and be careful. Now let's start under here with the chin and work my way up to the teeth, and around the tusks and then up here. Um, I will probably, if I can find them again, it's really hard to see on this model. There are some mean looking eyes under this ridge kind of. I'm going to paint those red so I can keep seeing them. Finish painting the snout. I'm going to paint over the tusks. That's not a real problem because I'll be painting up to those later. And get the snout in. But I want to see if I can get this to work first. Again, what I'm trying to do is blend the dark on the top with the lighter brown underneath by using this intermediate brown. This is really pretty. This looks like melted milk chocolate. It's actually several times been tempted to just try some. So I'm gonna just take this brush. This one must kind of slot this around. 
boundary between the two colors. I don't want too much paint on the brush. I don't want it. I need a whole lot of this color on here. I just want it to blend the two together. They, well, where it looks, well, it's still wet. Um, it's actually coming out okay, I think, at least on that side. We'll see what happens here. This is uh, breaking up, kind of. Mm. Mm. No. I think that's actually not bad. And with a with an umber wash over it, it's really flat looking right now. With an umber wash over it, it will blend even better, and will end up looking not too terrible. I'm going to let that dry and then see how it looks after it's dry. There's still a lot of work to be done on the face. Just it needs to, to be fixed there. There's one other thing I want to do before moving on to the face. Is I want you know a little trivial thing, but I want the tip of the tail to be black. Pull this out again for just a second. Paint out, touch the brush to it. There, I can't tell if that's never been painted or what. Is it's not given up. Guy right down here, so you can see how that's going. Sleep in a pain. I think I'll just, I'm going to try to clean it again here on the edge of the camera. The threads on the bottom just have really gummed up. Not just dry paint, it's just like. And then the jar, the cap will close, and then the cap will open. So I'm going to take a little time here and keep that on camera there. And you can watch me scrape the paint off the 
threads on the bottle cap. Did this on Monday, but apparently not enough. There's a lot of paint on here. It makes it really hard to use, and I think it doesn't seal properly, which is why one of the reasons this paint needed to be thinned last on Monday. The thinner seems to work pretty well, even though it's not the official thinner. It's just some, DH, some isopropyl alcohol. But this was getting so gummy, you could almost not use it. It worked. It worked pretty well today. In our next paint order, we'll get the artificial thinner. Because what happens with these jars is um, we like the big jars. Because when we were painting dungeon tiles, I mean, we could go through half of one of these easily on just one dungeon set. And so it was way more economical to buy it in the larger jars than in the tiny ones, little minis. But when we're, we've been painting these mini shakes lately, and instead of using half a bottle, we would use like six drops, right? So air gets in the bottles and the paint kind of... starts to dry and gets gummy. And there's usually a lot of it left in the bottles, so we don't want to waste it, so... We're going to get some thinner so that we can keep the consistency of the paint still working for it. I, I cleaned this Monday, but boy, there's a lot of stuff on here. Which explains why it's been so hard to get this bottle open and closed. Okay, well, I pulled a lot of paint off. It's uh, still kind of sticky, but at least it closes. Okay. So I'm looking at this and, you know, I'm starting to see a few things, like there's a spot there that never got painted. Uh, Wait, you seem to touch, but to tell you the truth, that blending of the two colors actually seemed to work. And you can still, I mean, you can see where one goes into the other, but it looks almost, it looks almost natural. And I like the way the, uh, the main turned out. There's just, there's little spots here and there that never got painted that I'm seeing as I rotate it and I think I think I'm just going to use the gray color on that the intermediate gray color just little tiny dots basically so I'm going to use a pretty pretty tiny brush I don't want to get weird colors everywhere else where I don't where they don't need to be but there's a spot down here mainly in the in the main and if I can just touch those, then they'll, they'll not be bright spots, but they also won't look... They also won't look, like, weirdly colored. There's another one up here somewhere. this intermediate kind of gray color between the brown and the black is an okay undertone want the spots to not be or the primer.
you know, you think you got them all before. You touch it up like three different times, but sometimes it, you just don't. ruining this brush. I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush. The one that I've been soaking with water here. Well, that's that. Now I'm going to check, basically I'm going to check the uh, two dark, the two base coat browns to make sure that there aren't any obvious spots that didn't get painted at all. Okay. Um, the dude. is uh, let's see the face color i'm going to paint the dark brown i'm going to start working on the face and this is going to be kind of just gloopy i'm going to paint the dark brown up to this i'm going to make the, sh the snout um kind of black just just black snout but i'm going to start with the under chin with the light with the light brown okay and that should be fairly straightforward. And you can paint up to where the, the tusk starts here, and then paint around basically where the red is. I don't want that red, and then up to the white. So I'm going to do that really carefully. With a little brush, and I'll put some paint down and then push it up to it. So I don't want to mess with the teeth again, particularly. But this is, this is the underbody color here, and that's the color of the chin. And then I'm going to go work on top. And that'll be the dark brown, and I'm going to kind of... I'm going to, I think it'll look more menacing. Okay, this, this needs some... This needs a little bit of uh, thinning as well, I think, so I might do that. But I, basically, I want to get this first. I don't mind just getting the brush a little saturated and starting at the tusk here. I want to paint up to the two and maybe into the tusk a little bit. Make sure it's covered. So it's a good place to start until I get the brush working. The, the chin. to show. Front. I think it'll be okay. There's some some red spill over there. I'm going to just leave little hints of it. Some little hints of it um, showing. Um, the gum line or something. But it You'll barely be able to see it, but I think it would, you know, just sort of let the teeth show a little better.
Of course, you can turn it down and just see that you didn't, you know, paint big chunks of the chin at all. This is as good a time as any to look around to see if there are any spots that are just not covered with the base coat. I'm thinking this looks okay, but there's still I need to go up just a little higher here. That's not too bad. Okay, underneath, and then um, on the top, I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use that intermediate brown, and then put the darker brown over it. Now this is good. At this angle, I can actually see where the eyes are. Huh, that's that's uh, that's going to be helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is a little more mechanical stuff, okay? I'm going to uh, clean this because this has even more of the problem of paint on the ribbon. There's still a fair amount of that really nice paint left, but I'm also going to thin it a little bit and then uh, scrape that off. You get to watch not so much painting as housekeeping. We've got the remnants of a gallon of isopropyl alcohol. Big, nice, big, giant thing. There's probably like a cup left. Yes, there was a time before all of it went into hand sanitizer that you could get a gallon of 70% isopropyl alcohol for practically not very much at all. and use it for handy things like cleaning up epoxy, thinning paint, wiping down counters, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and now I can't find this anymore. Ah, I didn't think of looking there. Why didn't I look at the label? It's upside down, but it is from White and White Surgical Supply, right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, and so, yeah, maybe maybe we could take a look at that. So, put a little thinner in there, get out my trusty exacto knife and try to clean this up so that what is left of it, at least, will stay liquid. Watch me scrape paint off a bottle. I'm probably, by doing this, saving at least um, a buck and a half, you know? Maybe, maybe 80 cents of paint that isn't going to be wasted. carefully scrape the paint away from myself and not toward myself. Little blades do cut quickly and easily. You can you can see just how much was built up on the, the threads of this bottle. Because, you know,
Yeah, you can stop this. Okay, well, this paper towel is going to have to be tired when I'm done with this. Actually, this is this is a very relaxing part of the painting because, other than you know not slicing part of a finger off or something like that, um, raping. Okay, well that's been thinned, then cleaned up. Brush this all this gook aside. Clean that up during break. And what I'm going to do next is bring out the intermediate color, that brown color, and put an undercoat on the snout. And then I'm going to come down and use the darker color and kind of highlight it because I want the face to be kind of dark and threatening. And the uh, only really delicate part here, because I don't have to worry about the tusks yet, because those are going to be painted in later. The only really delicate part here is along the upper lip, where I, where the teeth are painted, and I don't want those to um, get unpainted, you know, painted over. So I'm, I'm going to just start back here. Make sure I'm getting the roots of the tusks covered because those will be painted in a different color later. I'm going to paint the whole snout. And then um, cover it with a different, with a, whatever color I decide for that later. Okay, so lip kind of comes down and around. Make sure I paint up to the tusk here. If you can see it comes down and around. It's not as friendly as the lower lip was. In terms of getting it painted up to the teeth. So we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. Kind of turned out okay. Let me finish painting around the snow here. There are no teeth in front. He's in there. With the underside of the, the snout. Get that really good touchy touchy bit out of the way. And I'm gonna paint around the other side. This was very sloppily painted the first time around. Intentionally, because I wanted to get covered, but now I want to paint up to, but not over the teeth, like on the other side.
Okay. We came out okay. I'm kind of happy that I'm not having to redo a lot of things because of uh, screwing up. And to get, you know, it's, it's a difficult to get spot on this side, but easy from the other side. So there. Just painting up into the tusks so I can paint back down into it without leaving a gap later on. And then it paint the snout. Paint a different color later. over see that there are very large areas on the top that haven't been painted at all. But we need a tusk. I thought I had gotten this side and that the other side is the issue, but no. Yeah, we can done. Get there from here. Finish the finish this up here. This little tiny brush isn't the best for covering areas like this, but I'm lazy at the moment, so I'll just put little tiny bits on at a time. do just in looking at this and thinking about it other than making sure that these areas are actually covered they to come up in the bottle cap here and if that's okay because I'm almost done is need to do on the face yet is paint the eyes. Well, I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to bring the darker brown in over the top of the nose. And then what I'm going to do with the snout is I'm pretty sure this will work. Instead, instead of painting it, I'm going to use black wash on it, or dark gray or black wash. Because that will, if I'm real careful with it, I'll be able to highlight the nostrils, you know, and darken it. I'm going to treat it more like a paint. I'm not going to like a broad wash. It's just like a paint on the snout. And it won't be quite as dark then as in monochromatic as if I were to just paint it. happening next is I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to come back and paint the eyes red. I'm going to do that next because almost inevitably it will go further than I want, at least on one eye. One eye always turns out really well and the other eye always turns out crappy. Um, so I'm going to paint the eyes. I'm going to do those bright red with a little demon-like dot eyeball on them and go back and forth on those until they're done. 
Then I'm going to paint the tusks. I'm going to be painting those kind of... Uh, deck tan. It's not quite ivory-ish. It's a little grayer than ivory. I'm going to paint those deck tan, and those will be washed later. The same brown wash I'm going to use on the body. And then there'll be more brown touch-up. So I'm going to paint the eyes and the tusks, as then I know there'll be brown touch-up. I'm going to touch up the brown, run the, do the snout in the wash, and then bring this darker brown, which you can barely see up here, into the snout, okay, just along the top there. And then after that's done, I'm going to be, um, well, it's really not good there. There's a spot there that's just on the lower jaw. So I'm going to take care of that right away, where the, the skin of the lower jaw didn't go up on the teeth far enough. And so I got this little brush out, and I'm chatting. Ah! Okay. Is, um, then I'm going to brown wash the whole thing, the body part anyway. And that will, although the colors aren't bad, It'll highlight the uh, contours and make it look a little more lifelike than, than it does now. So that's the plan, is to paint the eyes and then the tusks, do brown touch-up. See that spot there? Right there. I guess technically the lower jaw paint should go up to the teeth more, but I'm just I'm just not going to do that. I know that that will not go well. So yeah, eyeballs, tusks, brown touch up, a little shading on the snout and the in the uh, top of the nose and the little snout thing itself, and then uh, wash. And then we'll see how this turns out. But right now, uh, we do need to take a short break. It'll be like, good grief. How do those spots keep appearing? Spot one, let's see. Um, I'm going to take a short break, like 10 minutes or so, more or less. And then we'll come back and do the things I said I was going to do, which includes red, red, and some deck tan. I was thinking of using this kind of brownish, uh, dark sand color for the tusks, but I think they'll look better if they are a little more grayish, greenish. Take a break. I would like to find that color that I want. Hm. Haven't used it in a long time. There it is. Yeah, colors. So, yeah, use this color for the tusks. Okay, eyeballs, tusks, wash on the snout, then the very tip of the nose, come back, do brown touch up, brown wash, and then try to figure out. Uh, shit. Okay. Oh, that's really buried in there. So before I wash it, I'm going to have to uh, extract it from the goo here and paint the bottoms and the hooves 
somehow. Maybe I'll just hold it up here while I wash it. I mean, that might just have to be because there isn't a good place to grab it. But I, I definitely need to like, like the backs of the legs and, and the hooves before I wash it. So that'll be a little bit of a holding challenge. But yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to take a break now. I will be back in about 10 minutes or so. And we will continue working. I'll, use, I'll be able to use the dark wash. It's tiny little bits on the insides of the ears too. Maybe. Okay, I think I've got what I need. I've got the uh, dark gray wash for the snout. I've got the red for the eyes. I've got the deck tan for the tusks. I've got the dark color, dark great color for the hooves. I've got this brown to touch up the back legs when it's time. I've got that rolling all over the place. It just, does it want to be this way? No. There we go. There's always a way. So you can take a look at that laying here while I go and uh, take a short break. See you in about 10.
So breaks over. Um, <clears throat> and I'm getting back to the boy here, which is looking okay. I mean, I think this, I think it's looking kind of okay. Um, what I'm going to be doing next is attempting to paint the eyes, which if I set it up like this, this angle, I can actually see where they are. Now I'm going to attempt to paint those red. It's going to have fiery bright eyes and it'll maybe have like a yellow, I don't know. I'm not very good at that. Mickey's really quite good at painting these little dot pupils. Look at that. I mean, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? The black dot with the yellow dot inside. So I'm going to just paint them red. <clears throat> and then I'm going to paint the tusks. And then I will need to be doing brown touch-up both around the eyes and possibly even the tusks. Uh, but especially the eyes, because those are hard to get you know, exactly right. Even on this model, they're not exactly symmetric. This one, the right side is a little better than the left. And I am finding, there's just these little spots that just keep showing up. I just haven't seen that one before, but it's pretty obvious. I'm gonna get that right away. Um, Yeah, do the brown touch up. Um, do this very, very bit of the nose with black wash. And then uh, the very last thing I'll do, well, it's not the last thing, is I'm gonna pull it off of the holder, finish painting here, do the who's, and then do a uh, umber wash, a brown wash on the whole body. So let's uh, let's start with the eyes and see how that goes. So I used the gray here to touch that up, but that didn't work very well. I'm gonna use when I do the dark dark brown touch up, I'll, I'll catch that. We'll see how these eyes go. Like I was saying I can see them from the top. I can't really get to them from the top, so we'll... Right. It's the tiniest little bit. That's pretty good. The other side is not as well defined on the on the model. So I know this is gonna be this is gonna require some back and forth to get it to be symmetric with the other one. Actually, that's not, it's not too bad considering. It's enough for that red though. The next is, um, I'm gonna do the gray wash on the nose.
enough to shake this up, you know. Use some in the bottle cap. It's probably actually enough to do this. And I'm, I don't want to just wash all over the place. I actually just want to use it kind of like a paint on, on the snow. But I didn't want it to be just plain black. This has some transparency to it. And I think what it'll do is it'll highlight the nostrils and things of that sort without making the whole thing just look like a monochromatic dark color. Pretty dark when it goes on, but it gets more transparent as it dries. That's really kind of what I'm looking for here. I want it to be darker, but not necessarily um, just black like the like the. the underside but you know why does it make that rid of it as well yeah so that that's pretty much what I was trying to get. Tusks, these little tusks are going to be a pain getting all around them. So I'm going to use a little brush, <clears throat> try to get down to the base and do that cleanly. <clears throat> With the larger ones, I'm going to just, you know, paint the base and I'll get the larger brush out, paint the rest of it, because this won't, this won't do it very cleanly or smoothly. Ooh, I knew, but what? I'm hoping this color works okay. No, nope, I don't want them to be one. Well, okay. More cap cleanup. It's a real mess. So this this color is the color that's going on. Kind of a weird greenish gray color that I think I think will be okay. The move that's around a lot to get. <clears throat> Hopefully, kind of stay on camera. Let's see. I need to prop this up here and hold it more in the light.
Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's actually on camera. You can see a spot there, so that's why I'm looking at brown cleanup. Somehow the brush may have to slip in there, but I think I can get in between there without too much trouble. It looks like it a bit further than I wanted to. Look at it from the top and try to get a good idea where these are supposed to end. base of this with the paint in there without most of everything else. One of those paints that's I'm just gonna throw some alcohol in as a thinner. It's getting down near the bottom of the jar. The air gets in there. Kind of um, makes it a little viscous, which with a little brush like this, it's not too bad with a big brush, but with a little brush like this, it just makes it uh, difficult. The paint gets viscous and then doesn't come off the brush, it comes up on the brush. And sometimes if it gets thick, I mean this paint usually really good it doesn't show brush marks and stuff but if it's too thick it'll pile up so giving a smooth surface it'll give a lumpy one Yeah, so there's little tiny bits of brown touch up. You know, like there's a spot there. I mean, it's a really tiny spot, but it's obvious enough that it needs to be fixed. Ooh, that looks a little ragged. Well, just demarcation lines will need to be worked on. Well, let's do these other, this other side and see how this goes.
I think the color is working okay. of the paint isn't so much, but I'll, I'll bring the brown back. The brown is behaving pretty well. And we'll clean up the uh, line that shows the base of the tusks. Not too bad. Needs a little touching up. Need to get the base of this big one. Again, getting the paint down in there, but not. I don't want it. clear demarcation line the brush the paint is getting a little viscous and so it's, it's it like sticks on the surface of the model and then the brush jumped weird And then we get the little bigger brush out and um, finish painting off the rest of the tusk with that. And then I'm going to clean up the jar, thin the paint a little bit, and then clean the, the jar like I did with the other ones so that uh, the paint that's left in here remains usable as long as uh, possible. This is a pretty good tusk color. I'm liking, I'm liking it as opposed to like a, a bright ivory or something. And when I put the wash on it, it'll look, it'll look less clean. I'm thinking the umbral wash would look best on it. I was thinking, yeah, toying a little bit with. black watch. This light, the ring light thing, it's um, really close to the color of the Primer. This is fun, like under here.
there's just a bunch of brown touching up just spots all over the place that need to be um, around the tusks that just got just touched by the bristles much more little touch up than I had expected there would necessarily be but nothing real serious job here already which is just as well because after I touch up the tusks and paint the dark color down onto the front um, I'm going to be taking it off of this holder anyway so it's okay that it's starting to fail get the Sacto knife out again, and you can just see that there's a whole lot of paint buildup on this. We're going to clean that off. Put a little alcohol in the paint and keep this alive until we're done with it. I've been spending a good deal of today just cleaning paint bottles, which which is fine. I kind of like doing that, actually. Just, you can tell when it's work, it's done. As long as I don't jab myself with the knife, it's uh, not too delicate. So there, that's that. Now I'm going to get out the um, oh, gummed up everywhere. Okay, what I'm going to do is get rid of this because it's all full of dry paint. Go. There's a new background. Great, brand new, bright background for the painting high-tech stuff now let's see what color do I need to do first I think it's um, I think I'm just gonna use the darker brown paint you can always paint a lighter spot if I need to. Got to <laughs> nicely done. We got to get this thinner on that. We'll do that in a bit. So there's just there's just all sorts of spots that need um, touching up around the tusks. Just little spots that got lighter color on it that need to be uh, repainted. So I'm just going to go around and catch those. There was this spot here where I put the gray paint on. Doesn't look good, so the brown
outside like Nice. It's really important as you're doing this touch up to touch that. Tip of your brush so that you leave another spot that needs to be touched up that wasn't there before. Trying to get these look a little more symmetric. Dark brown, just, just little bits of it on the top of the nose here because I want that to be darker. We get that some other time. I need to pull out the deck tan again. Because I got a little spot of the brown on it. And I also wanted to thin this. So get that done at the same time. Yep. Nice stump. One. Pull off the isopropyl alcohol again and just put a couple drops in this paint. A lot of these are getting down to like the bottom 15, 20%, but that's still a lot of paint. It's almost as much as like a full mini bottle. And we don't want to waste it, so we're just putting a little bit of thinner in it just to keep it alive for the time being. Okay, now what we need to do this, this light brown that I was using. The uh, flat earth and extract this extract this guy from the goo. Okay, scrape off all the goo. I mean it was really nice. It was good holding it. Yeah, it's the right thing to do to hold it, but now I need to finish these bag things and paint the hooves. I'm going to paint the hooves before I wash it, because if I have to go back with the flat earth color to do touch-up, I don't want to do that before I wash it. Otherwise, I have to wash everything all over again, but I've got this orange duck stuck on it. 
need to adhere to that much or not. I'm just going to have to hold it by the tackles on the back, the mane on the back, I guess, because I'll be washing all everything else. At least you can see it standing up there. Yeah. That's how it stands. So yeah, I need to paint back here down to the who's. And then I need to paint the who's. And then we will move on with the washing. This, and as I'm looking at it, so that I can see that this went a little too far here. Takes the opportunity to um, get the back. I'm just going to paint everything so that I know it's covered. And then we'll yeah, look at that. See, I couldn't see that when it was on the on the holder before. And then we'll try to figure out where the hooves start and the legs end, or vice versa. And yeah, if they end up where they shouldn't be, we'll just go back and forth with these colors. I'm glad I didn't try to do like any shading yet on this this base coat of, of the light brown underneath. supposed to be grabbing a model like this, but there's no other real way to hold on to this one. Okay. Be able to start with the front while the back dries. I'm just going to use this brush. I think I can get a nice clean line. <coughs> just basically going around the bottom of the foot. If not, then I can pull that other paint out again and um, use a bitty brush on it. The convention we were using is uh, how do you know if you've got more than one bottle of a color? Is put some paint on the bottle cap. That's why all of those have splotches on them. And you can tell which one was used and which one wasn't. Okay, so... Um, I think it's pretty clear here. where the demarcation line is, so... At least there. Now I just paint up to it. A ridge of fur or something that goes over it. That's... Uh, the cleanest line of demarcation we've had on this entire model so far.
Vamos ver se uma vida. around this one. It's really bright, but it, it dries pretty flat. You definitely want it to be flat. We did not get like toe polish or pedicure. See what we can do. The, little, the back ones are a little weirder. So it looks like they go up to about there. Not as clear in the back. The, is going to go where I put it here. What we're going to just try to do is make sure that they're kind of symmetric. You can see both at the same time. Yeah, that they both you know, are more or less the same, more or less, more or less. Like it's got like formal shoes. That's I don't know. I don't know what wild boar feet look like. They look like so. I'm just gonna look at them again to make sure that. It's painted on one is pretty much done on the other. Paint will pull on. Or it's dry. I'm going to set it down anyway, even though I paint it on the bottom. If it sticks to the paper, well, yeah, we'll deal with that. So, ta da! This pig is almost done. Needs to be done. Last is um, is it's going to get a an umber wash. Okay, I mean you can look at it, and it doesn't look too bad. The colors I think blended pretty well, but there's a lot of contour in the in the mold in the model, and it's kind of flat. And the umber wash, even though it's not going to add too terribly much color to it. It's going to make it look a whole lot less, less, oh, man, see, I touch it, I really should, 
I really should be a little more patient here and let this black paint dry before doing anything else because this it comes off. It just rubs off real easily. And then you got the toes that I painted. I'm going to let that set for a bit, and while that's setting, I'm going to look up and notice that I've got an entire hour left, and this washing will take like five minutes or so. Once I get going on it, it'll be really quick, and I need to decide what to do next. So I think I'm going to look at these guys again, the little lizard things, the little lizard league, and make a decision about which one I will attempt. And the one I'm going to attempt is going to be dual wheedling dagger guy. Got some pretty fancy daggers. He's even got like little metal, like a metal cap or ring on the end of his tail. Or that's kind of interesting. He's got a cape, sort of, not nearly as cool and flowing as this guy's cape. I mean, he's got really cool glowy cape. This guy's got kind of a droopy cape that wraps around in the front. Got a brooch there. Um, is, you know, is showing off something that's really not worth showing off because there's some stitching there. So it's been crudely repaired. And up here, more crude repairs. I'll try to highlight those. He's got a brooch that's going to be um, gold plated, you know, luxurious gold plate. It looks like there's some metal cross ties there that hold it together. There is, I think, breech cloth breeches. And his armor consists mainly of these bands. And I think. I think because it's trying to be more than it really is, and actually can let him, or it, them, I'm gonna let them have metallic bands. I'm gonna let those be brass. This will just be kind of a steel color. That'll be brass with maybe a little bit of like a gemstone insert. This guy is a little different. His teeth are different. Um, looking at it and I'm seeing that it's really not a tooth down there but that's just a flaw in the, in the mold I think that's just no, maybe not I, mean, I guess it's supposed to just have with these little teeth on top it doesn't have the nice big fangs oh nice that was good I just broke off one of his blades so what we're going to see here today, wasn't planning on it, but you know we're going to see it is uh, we're going to see uh, blade repair. I'm going to mix up a little bit of epoxy, let it settle for a while until it's sticky, and then uh, glue this back on because that was just really I can't believe it. It just went just like that. So that'll use up some time. Is fixing that. Okay. So this is uh, dry enough now that I'm going to get out to Umber Wash, put in this little pellet thing that we've got here. With these official. And put a couple drops there. Which I put him and his little sword. I'm gonna set it over to the side for uh, repair later. So I'm going to be washing all of this, just sort of rushing it on and getting it into the crevices. And then look at that. Hmm. Look at that. See, you just look around. And what do you see? Need to be touched up. I don't even remember how that happened.
Yep. Yep, uncap, touch up. Brush, move on. With Umberwash, as I said, I'm going to ask you to actually do the tusks with that as well. Um, it will just make them look a little bit more worn. And I think the umber will look on there, will look okay on there. It's tempting to use the black, but I don't think so. Okay, not on there. Yeah, so I'm going to hold it with this because I'm not going to wash the mane, the things on top, but I want to get some umber all around the rest of this. You give it a little bit more lifelike appearance. A little less dull, flat looking, um, and to put some emphasis on the folds and wrinkles in the hide. We'll definitely do the bottom. The bottom's pretty bland right now. But usually, you know, this wash goes on pretty quickly and it makes a really dramatic difference right away. And is more importantly, yeah, my skill level. Make it look a little darker. But that will be mainly on the really light stuff underneath, which is where I want it to look darker. And you can kind of see it pools of puddles up in the depressions, which is exactly what we're aiming for here. The bottom just, I mean, what are you going to do? It's just the bottom, right? The main thing there is we just, we don't want any unnatural looking slot. But on the sides here, we kind of want it to be built up a little bit in the depressions now. And since I'm doing the uh, process with the same, which is a really good thing, I don't need to be hugely concerned about the boundary. I don't really, I don't want splats all over this. Basically, I want this kind of a smooth look just to give it a little better color. We want it on the snout. This other side. I be a little bit careful not to really miss any spots. Because um, if I do, then the, the original color will show through and it won't look that good. I do want it to sink into the nooks and crannies and things on the. It doesn't really change the color of the tusk much, but it makes it look a little less, less fresh and clean. It's not this, this guy just took a huge bath or something. So yeah, I want them, I don't want real spots on it, but I want it to give it that change of color. Back of newness. I'm going around, I'm looking at places where it's kind of puddled, and I want to make sure that it's puddled in places I want it puddled and not so much where I don't. So I want it to puddle in like the crevices, the depressions in, in the model, but not just in the middle of nowhere. Really, 
Yeah, as Nikki would say, it's kind of subtle. But it, um, it really helps bring the model to life. I'm going to let this set here and let it upright at first. And then I'll set it down and show it off a little bit later. But what I need to do next is um, I need to do an emergency repair on this guy's blade because as I was looking at it, I managed to get my finger under it and it snapped right off. Very delicate. So I'm going to need some things I don't have right here. I'll be back in a second. I'm getting a toothpick and a piece of paper. mixing stand. So the magic elixir here is going to be quick cure, five minute epoxy. And I'm just needing like the tiniest dot of both the epoxy rosin and the hardener that I will be putting on my high tech mixing station. Separate at first. probably 10 times more than I need that tiny little dot. Now I need to get an equal amount of hardener. The other thing I need to do I didn't do is um, remember I talked about isopropyl alcohol. Well, that's what you use to clean up epoxy. Now those aren't going to do anything while they're just sitting there separately. Um, those jars, these bottles, are kind of gummed up at the top, and when I squeezed it out. We've got it on my fingers, which is yucky. I'm going to do some cleanup. I've been doing a fair amount of cleanup here today, so I'll just continue with that. Clean off my fingers. Oh my god. You know, I wasn't touching the model at all. But I managed to get paint all over my fingers, especially that tan color. So here, you can see what I'm talking about here. Is that that's some kind of ducked up and gooey, so do more cleaning. So I'm on a cleaning kick here. Clean off the tip of that. Got this cap one out fit tighter. I'll clean off that. Yeah, set that aside and then this one shows the same sort of symptoms. Clean that off. Keep this here. Okay, so what we do next is um, take a toothpick and mix these two dots together. And those of you who know epoxy, and I'm sure most of you do, <laughs> when the two come together, they start forming a chemical reaction that will lead to a very hard adhesive in about as they say, five minutes. And that's spread out all over, but basically I need about one-fifth as much as there is on this toothpick. So I'm gonna let that sit there. <coughs> and um, 
I know it's not the best way to do it, but I don't want to hold this for five minutes while it's trying to hold it still, and there's no way to clamp it. Fit it on here. I've done this before with even smaller things. I want this to fit here in a way that pretty solid on this side and the, and the inside. So what I'm actually going to do is let that epoxy sit there for the better part of three and a half minutes. And then I'm going to put this where it needs to be and hold it for only two minutes instead of five minutes. And hopefully then it will stick. What I, the things I've broken off before are little Velociraptor claws tiny little Velociraptor models. I've got some time. Nothing else to do. There. This is one of the guys I, I painted before. Great the Velociraptor. So up here in the front, he's got little toes three on each hand and I managed to break one of them off and did such a nice job of repairing it that now you can't tell which one broke. I'm hoping to accomplish the same sort of thing with this knife. Kind of a cute little guy, right? I like, I like to think that raptors like these had uh, sort of like tigerish stripes on them, so that they could they could hide in the in the reeds in the tall whatever they were grasses or something. <coughs> in Jurassic Park, and leap out at you. Anyway, yeah, that was that was an example of the repair that's possible. One has slightly steady hands and the cooperative epoxy. Yeah, so I wasn't planning to spend the better part of 10 minutes fixing a dagger, but you can't have a tool wielding dagger bearer bearing one dagger. So this is starting to set up. And I probably shouldn't have to hold it for more than like two and a half minutes or so. Get to watch me um, hold this little bit of dagger more or less where it's supposed to be until the epoxy decides that it wants to hold. Make sure that there's actually some in contact with the spot. Now, if you want, uh, I don't know what music is playing. I can't really hear it while I'm doing this, but probably appropriately, you could be playing the Jeopardy theme over and over and over in your head over and over and over until uh, this is done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's probably copyrighted. It's probably going to be deleted now on Twitch because I hung that up. But I think that's, you know, that's more or less where it should be. Oriented more or less as it should be. I can't really rotate. 
rotate it because if I do, then I can't hold it. So if worse comes to worse, it'll just come off again and I'll mix up another batch and try again. Went down from 150. And then we'll let it go and see if it's stuck. to 100. The only thing less exciting than watching paint dry is watching epoxy set. One more minute. Okay, no. Position wise. Okay. Great, but it's on there and the angle's not too bad. And as long as it sticks, that's the important thing. So this here, you can see, is pretty hard, but not not cured completely yet. So <coughs> let's see what we can do. Let's talk about what we're going to do with this. If we don't even actually get to it for a couple more minutes, because that needs to set. So there's several really important decisions to make. One is, and what color is this lizard? Going back to our existing group, remember there's eight of these, lizards can be many different colors, so they are orange, nice bright orange color, nice dark foreboding red color, uh, blue with little orange highlights, gotta have a green lizard, so there's, no, none of these are on camera, we will start over, lizards can be many different colors, we have for example an orange lizard, very bright, not much of it is showing because it's got that leather cap on it, so I think that was probably the best one to do orange. There's this foreboding kind of dark red color. That's a good lizard color. There's this light blue color with orange, little orange stripes. We've got an olive drab, just a plain old drab lizard. Okay. 
very heavily armed or armored, but you know, there's that. And we've got a lizard, green colored lizard. This one's very fancy. Mickey painted it. It's got a tooth necklace and little studded leather skirt, and shoulder guards, big spiky shoulder guards on just one shoulder. Uh, even the gold brass trimmed hammer. So one question is, and I'm thinking we've got eight of these. They don't all need to be, none of them need to be the same color at all. We need to figure out what color it could be. This one, I don't know, I've been thinking about doing a brown one. I'm thinking of doing it um, maybe really like either a buff or a dark sand. These colors don't always show up on camera perfectly, but could do this color with a brown wash or this color with a brown wash. And I'm thinking we haven't used buff in a long time. I'm thinking this guy will be buff with a brown wash and the brown wash will show the wrinkles and bumps on its skin pretty well. And then the horns can be uh, like a gray color or something like that, you know, so they show separately. There's quite a lot of the skin on the head and the legs showing. So there, that could be that. And we have to keep in mind there's two others, and those need to be different colors, too. We'll see how that goes. And then the next is, and what do we do with the rest of this? Like I was saying, it's got these bands, okay, these metal bands which seem to provide no protection at all, because they're not in any place, like shins, maybe if you're playing soccer or something. Up here in the thighs, I don't think that really helps. I think those bands... I mean, actually, they could be leather, but I think they're going to be metal. And they might even be fancy, so they might just be decorative. They'll be like brass bangles more than they would be armor. And they're even different from each other. This is just a single one. This one here seems to be two of them, two small ones. Not, it could be one thing, but I, they look like they're two separate things. Um, this will be like a chain mail cross that holds its britches up and its cloak together. And it's got these probably like chain mail. The only armor that seems to make any sense at all is the one that's on its forearms here. Those bracers. Those, those look like leather bracers though. It looks like they're stitched together here. So maybe that's all they are, but they could be any color leather. They don't have to be brown. There's a little gap here where the skin is showing through between the top of the braces and the cloak, but not on this side. So, um, yeah, so that part's pretty easy to decide. These will just be metal, right? These guys can just be uh, silver with a black wash. What color do we make this? There's a lot of it, okay? And I want it to be a light color so that the wash will show on it and bring out the colors. I've used light blue with a wash, like for the quilting here, but I've used that quite a bit, so I don't really know. I mean, it's been stitched up, and I want that to show. I might even paint that because trying to match but not quite match color. A little bit more here so that when I wash it that will show up. Probably paint this the same color. Top and bottom since they're connected that way. And then it's even got bands on its tail. They, this one, they uh, really like the, the totally worthless, in terms of armor protection, uh, bands on the skin. Old mark here, let's see if that comes off without breaking the tail off. the leg and the 
when that's painted, that'll show and that won't be good. Need that little filament on them. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be buff. Of, uh, not necessarily buffed, but buff. It's even got little little embellishments on its horns. That's kind of interesting. At least on one side, so I'll make sure that I try to remember to paint those a little bit of metallic, like a nail head or something. Uh, let's see. Looks like there's another piece of filament from the mold in here. Good thing I'm checking this before I get too far along, right? Yeah, you know, I kind of want to paint the cloak first. I'm going to paint the inside of the mouth today. I'm going to get the teeth. Maybe I'm going to do the beady eyeball look on these. These, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I'm going to get the inside of the mouth, the little teeth, and um, pick a color for the cloak and paint that on and see how that works. So I want a light color that will show the wash but not the light blue that I've used so many times. I'm thinking maybe one of the, one of the greens. <laughs> um, you could use like a flat green and use a black wash on it. I think that would look okay. And then the stitching on the cloak where it's, where it's been kind of put together I could use um, like a deep green or something, or a dark green, something that's close but not quite. This is a light blue we've been using. I don't really see any other color. I don't want to get into orange. This might be interesting. I could use this, it's called flesh. No flesh is ever that color, ever. But that might look okay with a with a umber wash on it. And would, whoop, yeah. Let's just break that off again. Would kind of uh, complement the the buff color. And it's not a color we've used recently, so that would that would be there. Okay. I want to paint the inside of the mouth a uh, scarlet red. It's the same color I used on this guy. And then I'm going to paint the little fangs. There's not much of them, tiny little fangs. Ivory. Even though, you know, I mean, you can see that that's not white even, but it looks really bright nonetheless. It's an ivory color. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out here. And then, um,. This is going to look really quite messy because I'm going to grab this fairly large brush. And what I want to do is um, get all the way inside. I'll be painting the lips and teeth later, but I need to reach in there and get all of that to be red. Otherwise, it will look really. Uh, not very good later if it isn't totally colored and this is the time to do it so now he looks uh, yeah let's just mess that up what the heck that's what it should look like there's a little a little gap there that will stay kind of red colored so we'll just say that this is like the Joker right now. The Joker equivalent of a little lizard. Side of the mouth. And then we'll let that dry.
the paint way over the lips on the outside. Because then that gives me something to work with when I paint back up to it. And I won't leave a gap between that and the, and the primer. That's that little snaggle tooth that needs to be painted as a tooth. This is the only one of them that has an open mouth. I just realized that I knew one did, but <clears throat> wasn't sure. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry before I paint the tooth, the teeth. And I'm going to um, paint the cloak. Now I'm gonna paint that first for two reasons. One is that I like to paint from the top down. So when there's something raised above, Something else I like to paint up to the contour, and that's what I'm going to be doing. And we're going to be painting his old breech claws the same color. This is <clears throat> not going to be a very uh, fancy cloaked one because he's got all these fancy bangles. And I want to let's just see how that color looks. So I'm going to do that first now and let it dry. And that way, if it turns out to be not good. One of the first things that can be done the next time I come down and paint, which will be next week. Nikki's going to do Friday. Um, one of the first things that can be done is to overpaint it. I'm going to use this size brush. Not a huge brush, but it puts a lot of paint on pretty quickly. Now I'm going to paint all around I think that I'll be painting down to it later. There's that little brooch there. And the chain mail. That'll get painted later too, as will these bracers. Get the inside here. When I paint the arm later and it comes up to it, that will be a spot for multiple touch-ups. But this might be an interesting color, especially with the wash. And, um, yeah, we'll just see. So the brooch and the chain mail. We'll get uh, embellished later. There'll be There'll be some shiny brass highlights on this guy that I think will look good against what will otherwise be not very spectacular. There's a lot of this color cloth. Look too bad. Hopefully, it'll look good with a wash on it when it gives it a little bit more uh, light. And then there's that stitching I talked about. I'm actually going to grab a, after it was dry, I pick a complementary but not identical cover to uh, show off how this attempt at finery didn't quite work out. Maybe those were just battle wounds. Maybe instead of just being worn out, you know, it, it was uh, slashed in battle. I'm sure that this guy would prefer us to think that. Rather than that, it was just tatty. But nonetheless, I'm going to highlight those stitches after that's dried. And like I said, there's quite a lot of this, but it has texture. 
and I think with a wash it would it'll look it'll look pretty okay. I'm just looking around to make sure it's covered. I'll be painting up to it all around. So the important part here is to make sure that it's it's all painted in its base color. And then there's that, I forget that, the, kind of the front tail of the right front of this thing. So yeah, it's a little translucent. It's already showing the, showing the folds pretty well. And that will be uh, emphasized when we put the wash on it later. And like I said, this this uh, this character has a lot of bands. They look more decorative than functional. Later, um, the others, yeah, all these other guys have these fangs up in front, like that. This one doesn't. In fact, I don't see any teeth up on top at all. I guess there's kind of little nose there and there, but it's got this little snaggle tooth thing down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do next is get out the teeny brush and the ivory paint and paint those teeth. And what I'm going to try to do is uh, not get it onto the red. You know, I want to have to try to touch up the red on the inside of the mouth, but I'm not particularly concerned at all about getting it on the part that will be painted skin color later. Okay, so just looking at this again, um, what I want to do is like paint down into the skin, or in this case, up into the skin, and not get into the mouth. So let me get this little tiny brush out. This I forgot to clean this thing last on Monday, so I'll try to clean it today. And um, I want the ivory in here. I'm thinking that's probably the end. So, tiny dot. A tiny dot is ten times more than I need for what is a tiny tooth, and I should be putting this on a stand. Um, and I think I will. Grab a bit of the paint on the tip of this brush and make an effort to paint the tooth that's sticking out there. And then at the top, there are, instead of fangs, there are just these little nubs of teeth. You can see them. But I want to get those, and then when I paint the front, the mouth, that'll, that'll clean that up. Okay, so I basically succeeded. I didn't want it to get inside the mouth. On the outside here, I'll be able, when I paint the skin, I'll be painting around that. So if you can't see them, I'm going to do this right now just so you can. Um, Nikki's convention was to have little beady eyes right in the front here. And we know that that's actually the way the model was designed because there's one that has um, a leather helm that goes down here. I sort of did a different convention of, of eyes. Which she tells me is cute, but is different. You know, these you know, these two sides are not at all the same. So I'm just gonna, why not? I'm just gonna paint these ivory right now. 
and um, that's going to be where the eyeballs will be. And I'll probably put like a bright red dot or something on there, or orange or something like that later. There. See, on this side, it's really clear. The thing just curves around and fills it in. On this side, it isn't round. And so, anyway, there's that. So there's tiny little teeth there, a snaggle tooth thing there, that there. Get inside the inside of that tooth. Um, that cloak color is going to be fine. I think that's going to look good with a wash on it. And I'll be doing the stitchery. Um, and kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe, actually I got this on my brush. I'm just going to do that, and then I'm going to pull this other color out again because I got a little too much on the front, and before I finish, this might just be like the last thing I do before I start wrapping up, um, fix this mess here. Okay, because when when it's washed, that lighter color will show the detail of the stitching, I think, pretty well. So yeah, I mean, there's just a little bit of it there. You can kind of see it. It's not too bad on the back here. And it, um, it won't stand out quite as much with the washer. Okay, so let me just clean this brush and we'll wrap up for today. So this has been relaxing painting and it's been fairly relaxed today with Dyson Dungeons. Um, we are a streaming show. We do a Dungeons and Dragons uh, stream on Sundays at 2 o'clock. A little bit off and on during the summer because there's a lot of vacations and things. Um, but we uh, do our own dungeon tiles, paint them here on the show, and we also do minifigs. Today I did a wild boar that I think came out, you know, okay, considering that it's a wild boar and there isn't too much to be said about it. And I started painting the sixth one of our eight little lizard guys. Picked some colors and some highlights that I'll we'll be working with. So we'll see how this guy turns out next week, because Nikki will be with you on Friday. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we announce if we're ever taking a vacation, which we might do in August. Uh, but Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, from 10 until 2 Eastern time, tune in and watch us paint and sometimes actually epoxy, like where I broke off the dagger today. Do a little repair emergency. Uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about our streams, about our show, about our printing, and sometimes even a little bit about ourselves, but not very much. And uh, those of you who join us are really welcome to keep following us encourage others to follow having followers is a good thing so we appreciate that and if anybody really wants to help out we'd like that we have a patreon patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and you're very welcome 
to check that out and uh, help sponsor us if you like. That would be really wonderful. So thank you all for joining in today. It is much appreciated. And we will watch Nikki paint something much more intricate and better on Friday. And we will pick up with this little lizard guy then as well. So, okay, it's only quarter two. Oh, look at that. I missed my time. I thought it was, uh, when I looked up at that clock on the screen, which is like this big, right? Uh, big without my glasses on it looked like it was um, 159 but I was wrong it was 139 three and fives look kind of alike when you can't see them I've got more time so with that more time what I'm going to do is more things how about that um, I'm going to start working well I'm gonna do the little Hmm. I'm going to do the, the, the banding, these fancy bands here for, that are on for some reason that doesn't make any sense because they provide no armor protection. So there's one there, there's two here, there's some on the ankles. Highly decorative, totally pointless. And I can do that with a larger brush because I just want to make sure that they're covered. And I'm going to make them brass because for some reason this particular lizard uh, likes wearing, oh, and there's three of them on the tail too. So brass is a fun color to work with. I'm not going to use a real bright one. I'm not going to pretend they're gold or anything. So let's use up the last remaining 12 to 13 minutes of this by continuing to paint stuff. I had a mistake before. So this is this is an okay thing to be doing right now, even near the end, because I want to make sure that I cover the ring, and I don't really care at this point if I get terribly much paint onto the surface of what will be the skin color because I know that I'll be oh yeah I have to get it in between these rings so I know for example there'll be some back and forth touch up but those will be tiny little dots this way though I can get the base coat on and then it'll be really obvious where the rings are too which will be a helpful thing One day I ended the show early because I just ran out of things to do and didn't want to get started on that bore. But since I've got this this one going already, and there's time to do some more things, so let's get we'll just do those things. Painting this guy kind of a buff color. Hoping, no, well, these are pretty shiny. They should show up against that. Um, each of these lizards is a different color, and we, we've used up the good lizard colors already. So now we're down to the yeah, meh lizard colors. I'm going to be leaving a real lizard color challenge for Nikki because there's two left and there aren't any good lizard colors left. They might they might end up looking the same color as one of the other ones, I don't know. I'm using up one of the last remaining not very bland 
wizard colors on this guy. People design and, and print these things, and the design looks really cool. And uh, then you can't paint them. There's been a couple that have, I mean, they've been great detail, and they look really neat, but they're almost impossible to get paint onto the places you want paint. That wasn't, I mean, that was a little annoying, not really too bad, but. Part of the ring was just peeking out under the cloak there. One goes under the cloak, but I can paint up to it and get it all messily all over the leg because that doesn't matter. Deal with it when I paint the, the body color. nub under there. I think it's like a clasp or something. It looks like it might have just been a, a like a mold mark. I really can't tell. I'm going to treat this like it's two, that, that those are two separate ones rather than one connected one. So I'm going to be painting the body color in between those. Because of these bangles, I mean, painting the leg, ah, nice. Right near the end, and I just let the brush slip, and it's gonna be dark. I'm gonna try to clean that off this way. So that's gonna show underneath. And I will touch that up yet before I finish today. I think I got most of it, but still. So we'll get the brass on these bangles so that we know where they are. It's going to be a lot of fiddly work with the body color. Usually the body color goes on really easily, but in this case with all the bangles, it would be a little bit of a challenge. And then these things, these little bracer things, um, we might be able to get the paint in between later. I don't know what color those are going to be. You know, they're they're leather. They're not metal. Give that some thought. And then they're stitched on there, so I don't know. I might just make them leather. We have a really nice leather brown that shows well with a brown varnish would be the easiest thing to do. On the other hand, you know, we might want them to be a little more colorful. I've got seven minutes left. I'm going to pick a color and put it on there and it'll be there and we'll see. I want it to be kind of a light color. I think maybe Make them blue because why not? At least they'll be blue for now. It's not going to be a startling blue like hot or marine, which is a really pretty color, but not really appropriate 
It's going to be this thing called medium blue. I just want to brush the edges there, but I'm not. No, that's that's not going to be bad. That's going to be okay. Sometimes you just grab a color and think, oh, well, this, this might work or it might not. Just what I thought here. And it seems to be okay. Need to get underneath there. And on this side, there is a little bit of the skin color that shows between the top of these, what are they, bracers, and the bottom of the cloak. I'm going to leave that mostly unpainted so that I remember that it's there. I used to be able to paint really tiny detail with this brush. I use this particular brush a lot over the last two decades. I think, you know, most of this is going to be pretty light. Having this kind of dark little contrasty thing. Bracers is so, uh, it's not a bad idea. Even on camera, that's always, always a pleasant surprise to look up. Let's see that it's still in camp. So, a little bit over the edge there. I'm not going to touch that up yet because um, when I do the brooch and these chains, there'll be there'll be some need for touching up of the cloak color. Maybe here where I can't really see where the delineation is. I mean, it's not much of a thing, but having that little bit of dark color, but otherwise it's going to be a very light colored model, it's not too bad. Uh, the blades will just be metal. They get painted later, and then these, I don't know, I'll paint those. Um, I don't know, they might even be kind of a cool looking color. They might be like sea blue or something. Okay, well, 
Sisor. That was a useful way, a worthwhile way of spending the last couple of minutes after I reoriented myself to time and space. So what we've got going here is um, a board that is now finished. And the next time Zoria sees one, if she hasn't already, she'll now be able to turn into a giant wild boar. Maybe I should, when I show it, I should show it on camera. Camera. And I got to start on number six of our little lizard legion. Uh, painted the mouth, got the teeth roughed in, roughed in the cloak. Um, the bangles. So what we'll be doing next on this one is um, probably the little metallic cross there that is holding pieces of it up and the brooch which I promised I would paint brass with a gem in it and I had the brass paint out and I failed to do that so just put that on now since it's still alive. It stays usable for a good long time. Yeah, these will be metal, just like chainmail metal. Um, and then painting the body color is just, it's going to take a good long time because it's just a whole lot of fine detail all around a lot of boundary lines and narrow little spaces and things so spots there and there where the skin shows through the sides here the whole face so there i'm glad i caught that a little bit okay so we'll be working on this guy on Monday, probably. Nikki will be with you on Friday doing either one of these two, one of these two, or something completely different. We'll find out. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to join us on our Dungeons & Dragons Twitch stream on Sundays at 2 Eastern Time. And uh, at any other time as well, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, 10 until 2 Eastern Time, as we continue to paint miniatures and maybe get back, maybe, you never know, to doing some dungeon tiles, just as a change of pace, put a dungeon, dungeon together. <coughs> we haven't put a dungeon together in a good long time, and those are always fun. Um, join us on social media, and if you are willing... Uh, hop on to Patreon, patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and support our show. Thank you all. And we'll see you soon.